Good morning. Statistically, about half of you in this room will be British Gas customers. We'll supply many of you with gas and electricity. We'll care for your boilers, your appliances, plumbing, drains, electrics, heating controls and security systems. We'll work with many of your businesses. So service is at the heart of what we do. It's our business model and our number one priority. It's who we are. That wasn't true of the business I joined in 2006. It was losing 28% of its customers every year. Staff turnover in one of the call centres was more than 100% annually. The net promoter score, measuring how positive customers feel about the service, was minus 37. It took six minutes on average to answer the phone. And British Gas's web address was the somewhat unintuitive house.co.uk. And the company had an astonishing 86% of all the industry complaints. Six years later, the new management team, of which I am proud to be a part, has turned things round. NPS is plus 50. We answer the phone in less than a minute on average and often much faster. A third of all our customers are registered for online services. And two thirds of all transactions take place on a smartphone or on the website, now renamed BritishGas.co.uk. We have 12% of all the industry complaints, significantly lower than our market share, and staff attrition is 8%. Customer churn, the acid test output, is less than 7%, by some way the best in the industry. So that's what I want to talk about today, the British Gas transformation story 2006 to 2013. Actually, I'm not going to do that at all. Why not? Because that service transformation, for all that it was necessary, hasn't solved British Gas's biggest problem. We are certainly a market leader. To be fair, we fight it out for top spot with our rival SSE. They win on some measures, we win on others. Nonetheless, we face a significant challenge to our business. We do not have customer permission to operate in the way that we historically have. Our profits generate controversy at best and fury at worst. Our financial results last month were described by some, and I quote, as obscene, extortionate and exorbitant. That's despite our long-term post-tax margin being the rather modest 5%, and our 2012 margin actually fell to an even more modest 4.1%. Even in cash terms, some other companies' profits dwarf the £600 million my business made. We don't directly control 85% of our costs. Only recently we've proved vulnerable to Middle Eastern geopolitics, the Scandinavian weather, government environmental and social policies, Japanese earthquakes and anti-nuclear sentiment in Germany. But many of us, but, but many believe us to inflate our prices artificially and make excessive profits. The revolution in service from 2006 to 2013 has not led to widespread acceptance of our business model. In fact, as service metrics have risen, trust metrics have fallen. We continue to face intense political, governmental, media and regulatory scrutiny, and even prime ministerial interference. We do not have permission from the customer to make a profit. Without that permission, how could we ever consider ourselves a market leader? Why have our service improvements not earned us that permission? Of course, customers want us to answer the phone quickly, communicate well and get the bills right. And we do deliver on that the vast majority of the time. But consumer expectations have changed. And that's what I want to walk, talk about today. That's change. The new customer expectation. If we meet it, then we will truly be a market leader. Put simply, customers will no longer accept the energy company being in charge. Us saying, we know best. The industry attitude has been, here is our product. We'll sell it at a price that covers our costs with a little bit on top. We will work to win your custom. But unless you have a problem, we don't want anything to do with you after that. We'll deal with you when you arrive and again when you leave us. The industry has been stuck in a mindset reminiscent of a Victorian era parent where parents see their children once in the morning and once in the evening. Authoritative, didactic and prescriptive. The public have had enough. Why don't consumers mind that some companies make profit margins 40% or more, far in excess of our own? It's because it's not about the size of the profit, or even the size of the margin. 
Consumers want a sense of choice, effort and value. And consumers currently feel little sense of this with energy. Our home services business, in contrast, has cracked this. They've provided that sense and won permission to operate following the improvements in their service. There is no controversy about their profits or margin. Admittedly, they're selling an inherently value-added service rather than an essential commodity, making it arguably easier to achieve. But we must match them. The problem is, my electricity and my gas isn't different to my competitors. So no choice there. They feel that providing energy is easy. We just bill and make a profit. So no effort there. And they feel little connection to the value of the product they purchase. Will answering the phone faster create that sense of choice, effort and value? I don't think it will. A more fundamental change is needed. We have to be so much more than an efficient billing operation. Value presents a significant challenge. To appreciate the value of something, you have to know the cost. But knowing the cost of energy isn't easy. Let's say I want to know how much it costs to boil an egg on a gas hob. To do this, I have to turn off all my gas appliances and take a meter reading. I then boil the egg, and I always go for five minutes, and then take another meter reading. All I then have to do is make a simple calculation using the two meter readings. And here it is. That's a well-known Ofgem formula. The, the, bit, the bit at the bottom is actually mine. The rest of it is given to us by the regulator. That's the formula. And then I actually did it when I boiled an egg. And the answer looks like this. There you go. It's about 0 0.0049 of a pound, or half a p. Right? That's the calculation. It's easy. Now, I'm on a two-tier tariff, something that mercifully will soon be obsolete. So I actually get two answers, depending on how much gas I've already used the day I boil the egg. It's either half a p or a penny. Looking at this, is it any wonder that consumers feel disconnected and disempowered? What an irony. Consumers feel disconnected and disempowered from the energy industry. We need to do the opposite. We need to connect and empower. Then there's the question of effort. Is it easy to supply energy? Very few customers understand the challenges, whether it's the vulnerability of our energy supply, the volatility of our input costs, the challenge of profitable energy generation, or how our profits fund investments in Britain's energy future on a massive scale. Just two weeks ago, the unusually cold March weather, alongside the failure of a Norwegian gas pumping plant, sent wholesale prices soaring above a pound a therm, almost double expectations. It isn't all that easy. So an education piece is needed. But there I go again, the Victorian parent, educating my customers on energy facts. There is a place for facts, but they will never, on their own, solve our problems. We need to provide choice. We need to let customers feel that they are free to choose whichever energy company they want, and there will be a meaningful difference in the service they receive. Not just a different bill with varying degrees of efficiency. In short, they want to be in control. Do you remember the old British gas advertising campaign? Don't you just love being in control? Let's take a look. I pride myself on being in control of my phone. But knocker here. Knocker. Go. He used to bring me grief. Burnt bangers, shriveled steaks. He couldn't even do porridge. So, the shame was, boss, I've got this gas cooker. So now, we're not telling him to turn up the heat. Well, cool him. He does it. He's handsome. What's for tea? Get a little oyster, he's gone, eh? Have a goon, saucy, salted so truth, eh, governor? Don't you get saucy with me, son. Don't you just love being in control? British Gas was all about putting customers in control. We knew it in the 1980s when that was made, and we are reconnecting to it now. We have to let go of our customers, let them be who they are and let them choose. For too long, we've been just marketing to meters, looking at the type of meter in the property and stopping there. So are you a prepayment customer or do you pay a quarterly bill? That was the main question the industry has traditionally asked. But a credit meter customer could be a 35-year-old with two kids or a 70-year-old widow. A prepayment customer could be a 23-year-old tenant 
avoiding the risk of debt, or a second homeowner who wants to keep things simple. Four people, all with different wants and needs, requiring different products and services, we must market to the person, not to the meter. I learned a long time ago that I can't behave like a Victorian era parent. When I watched my teenage daughter leaving the house wearing a belt, masquerading as a skirt, believe me, I want to. But I can't. I have to let go and accept her choices, within reason. <laughs> I must do the same with my customers. They have to be able to choose. My kids are the technology generation, and the evolution of that technology has resulted in a significant cultural shift. It's brought freedom and choice, customization and itemization. Just look at all the iPads you have at this conference. This technology brings control. Consumers want that from energy too, perhaps without even realizing it. And that's the main reason consumer expectations have shifted. An energy bill isn't itemized. How much does the fridge cost this month? How much do I pay to run the TV or the skybox? No one knows. Can you imagine receiving a non-itemized phone bill these days? Or arriving at the supermarket checkout and being told, it looks about 50 quid, let's go with that. That's the energy industry today, in 2013. We have to change that, it just won't work anymore. Actually, at British Gas, we are changing it. For a start, and John mentioned it, we are leading the industry in new technology. We've installed 800,000 smart meters already, more than all the other energy companies put together. Communicating directly with our computer systems, they mean no more meter readers, no more estimated bills, no more strange calculations. And a display in your home telling you exactly how much energy you're using in pounds and pence at any moment in time, including for that boiled egg. Customers will be in control of their energy consumption like never before. And why should it be any other way? Our remote heating control is revolutionising how customers control their heating. They turn it off and on with their smartphones. They never heat an empty house or have to guesstimate what time they'll be home with an old-fashioned timer. Our smart energy reports are telling our customers precisely when they use energy, how they are using it and how that compares with their neighbours and most importantly, how to save money. Complaints from smart meter customers are two-thirds lower than from customers with normal dumb meters. And smart, custom, smart meter customers are staying with us for longer. The main reason? No estimated bills, it's simple. Uniquely, we're now offering flexible direct debits. Our computer system won't write to you and tell you how much you must pay. You'll choose. You can take payment holidays, change the amount you pay, and request refunds. Of course we'll advise and provide our expertise, but the customer is in control. We are providing solutions to problems, targeted complete propositions that make the customer's lives better. It's a completely different model for the energy industry. But with 16 million customers, we cannot provide one product for all of them. That would generate merely an average of averages. We must segment, target, and then adapt. We must be agile, fleet of foot, and responsive. And it isn't all about digital technology. The warm home discount and the priority services register are precisely for our elderly and disabled customers and those most in need. And we're now writing to customers every six months, telling them if we have a cheaper tariff for them. But we don't just move them onto it. It might not be what they want. They would not be in control. Who am I to decide that your mother must pay by direct debit or manage your account online? She might not want to. But equally, we dare not people, put people into boxes. My 80-year-old mother does manage her account online and pays by direct debit and loves doing so. Yes, we must segment and provide targeted solutions to problems, but we must not restrict. Some younger customers might want to have paper bills. Some older customers may use a smartphone. There's my mother again. We must listen to our customers, co-create with them and evolve, and then keep listening and evolve again. Putting it simply, we must work with our customers on their terms, not ours. It is a transition from push to pull. Our excellent products and services will attract business. We must trust that. It's why we stopped doorstep selling completely two years ago. But what about cold sales phone calls? We know customers don't like them, and I'll be honest, I don't like them. That's why we're transitioning from cold calls to warm calls. So we call when customers want us to call them. And guess what? Conversion rates are higher when a customer wants the call, 
we're winning permission to sell and to make a profit. Focusing on the customer is opening up new opportunities. Energy efficiency products and services, an opportunity for growth. We've chosen to help our customers use less of the core product we sell, dealing with rising unit prices. And just this morning, I realised that on average, our customers are now using 20% less gas than they were four years ago. Why haven't we ducked that rather counterintuitive challenge? Because we're working with our customers side by side, responding to their needs. We're starting to win their trust. Energy customers trust us to supply energy efficiency products and services, and we attract new energy customers with our energy efficiency propositions. So if our recent past is paternal, our future is liberal. Customers can come to us as they want, when they want, and how they want. I am a customer service libertarian. Our vision at British Gas is to care for Britain today and lead a smarter energy future. Care. We chose the word deliberately. Care is service plus. <clears throat> it's service and a lot more. It's personal. We listen, empathise and communicate and not merely broadcast our own views. We are transitioning from a paternalistic energy supplier to a liberal provider of complete energy services. But the foundation stones of our business won't change. We will still be embedded into communities. Our 13,000 engineers will still serve millions of homes, even skiing through the snow recently to get to some of our customers. We will continue to provide power to the homes and businesses of Britain on a scale no other energy company can match. I'm very proud of British Gas. We've changed once, and we're now changing again. We are changing the way we think about our customers. We will organise around them and not the other way around, on their terms. We'll put the customer front and centre and respond to their needs in a way that has never been seen before in the energy industry. From strict paternalism to empowering liberalism. From taking control to giving control. It's very exciting. It's a vision and it's happening now at British Gas. Very soon I want to be able to look at our customer service operation and say, isn't it great not being in control? Because the customers will be, all 16 million of them. It's the only way we'll become a true market leader. Thank you very much indeed.